everybody welcome back to the iron oak sawmill beautiful clear blue skies today light breeze great temperatures maybe in the mid 70s here for summertime not bad here in pennsylvania but we got the lt35 all lined up ready to work and we're gonna be milling some yellow poplar tulip poplar uh this particular log right here about 24 inch on the big end 22 inch on the small end so minimal taper at best excellent log clear looks yep, clear from one end to the other 12 foot long it's going to turn out some really nice boards uh, four quarter boards once again i'm going to show you how we get these about the straightest grain we can get them and uh just going for the highest quality we can get out of this log let's go ahead and get it loaded up on the wood miser and get sawing Deb's new log right can hook going to work now if i can just get a bite into this probably should have gotten our bigger one out but come on there you go now she got a bite Ooh, she wants to wrestle Ugh. Okay, got the log loaded up in there on the mill. Got it oriented the way I like it. Uh, what I usually like to do is put the, uh, what we call the ugliest side of the log up first. I did notice we had one cat face here. It's an old branch nub healed over. On this side of the, on this side of the logs, we put that side up. One of the other things we look for on the ends, you know, we, we try to seal our logs as soon as we get them cut. Seal the logs up with anchor seal too, so there's no checking, but occasionally you still get a check in them. What I like to do is try to make sure that check is going to be horizontal to the mill deck on one of our cuts when we open up a face that way when you cut down through your boards you don't have a crack this way going through all of your boards I'd rather just have it maybe in one so you do the best you can with that next thing we're going to do is uh go ahead and level the pith so let's go ahead and show you how we do that okay what we like to do especially with a log of this high quality uh being nice and straight grain like this is we like to level the pith. And if you haven't heard us explain this one in the past, uh, the pith being the center of the growth of the tree, what we like to do is measure up from the bunk on the mill to the pith on each end of the log and adjust with our roller tow boards on the wood miser to get that distance the same on each end. That'll ensure the, the straightest grain you can through a board. And uh, to me, the highest quality lumber you can get out of a log. So let's go ahead and do that now. All right, the pith, the very center of the growth of the tree. You can just trace it in as your growth range gets smaller. Right there, that's your pith. And if you do get some checks, what they will do is radiate from that pith out. So in this case, we had two different checks coming in on an angle where they meet. Boom. Pith of the tree. I'm going to go ahead, measure up from the mill bunk to the pith. And that's right about 12 and a quarter. I'm gonna go ahead and measure the other end, see what we got down there and make our adjustments. Here we're on the far end of the log. You can see this one's really obvious. There's actually a nice little hole there where these two check marks line up. That's your pith on this end, measuring up. Wow, we are so close already, just sitting on the, on the bunks. It's about 12 and a half here. So we've only got to raise that far end a quarter inch. Some guys will say good enough. Uh, here at the Iron Oak Sawmill, hey, I used to be a machinist. I worked within thousands of an inch, so <laughs> call me picky. Oh, maybe a little bit much there. Back it down. All right, let's go ahead and remeasure and see what we got. All right, back here on the operator's end, after making our adjustments, 12 and 3 eighths to the center. Let's go check the other end. Here on the far end of the log, 12 and 3 eighths. I think we nailed it, folks. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and open that first face up and see what we got. Okay, folks, what I'm looking for here is where my blade's gonna be going in and where my blade's gonna be coming out. So right here, we're at about 24 and a quarter inches off the deck. 
And on this end, that'll come out. Not bad, right about, right about here. Maybe I'll go down a little bit more. I said this log was a good log. It had very little taper to it, only about a two inch taper. What I'll do here is take uh, a few boards off of here that we'll have to edge out. You got that there? No? <laughs> have the simple set set for four quarter. This way. There we go. Go ahead and turn this up again. Keep your clamp close by. It's gonna go ahead and level it up again. Once again, measure up from the pith, or red, measure up from the deck to the pith. We're right about 12 and a half on this end. About 13 and a quarter. So Deb, you wanna take that end up a little bit? I think we got it. Yep. Nailed it.
Okay. Okay, now that we have the, the pith leveled again in this direction, see Deb do this in previous videos, we're doing is squaring this cut to the deck of the mill, so. Top towards me. Ready? Yep, top towards me. Check it now. Nope. Towards me. Top. Okay, stop now at the bottom a little bit. Wow, this is... I think, yep, that's good. Got it? All yep. Right. Good. And there you go. Because you cannot depend on your stops to be square. I can square the stops, and all I need to do is one time push the clamp a little too hard against the log, pushes the stops out of square, and we're right back here. So what we do, stops are working to stop the log. We square it with the uh, framing square. Now that we're level, now that we're square, I'm gonna go ahead and make this cut and uh, start producing some boards shortly. Even went all the way down. Good thing where I think we're only going to have four pieces of scrap, considering this is a uh, Wait, a really good log with very little taken. We should only have four pieces of scrap to cut out. Great for these because I want to get a good look at what we're dealing with. Looking for the rainbow again. So now that I turned it and I cut a new face, simple set gets turned on before I lift the head up and come back. Get in the right place to drop it for the next cut. What we got now, we dropped our roller tow boards, turned our log, and uh, we're on our fourth face. Let me check any measurements here. On this end, we're at 18. On the far end, it's pretty close.
Bev was out. The other one was taking his bath out. Uh, right. Went ahead and cut two more boards off of here. Now what we're looking at is where's my best space? Right now, the face I'm on is the best space. But you keep cutting down the space, making a bunch of really big boards. Okay, what we did before we turned the can up to this face after the last two cuts was we made sure that the distance from the pith to here, and the pith to here, was the same distance at seven and an eighth, so we have a 14 and a quarter inch wide can. These are our two worst face, top and bottom. Now, what we're gonna do is trim those down, making this can a 12 inch can. We're gonna turn it back up and start picking from our best face. So in order to keep this pith centered up on this, these two faces, is we've got eight inches Go over eight inches to the pith on this side, so we're going to take two boards off. That'll get me down to six. And on the bottom here, we've got uh, about nine and a quarter, so we're going to take two boards off of that side plus a little bit of trim, and we should be good to go. Also, one thing we're going to do here on this first cut, actually, we're going to take a trim cut on this, because while we're cutting this on any face, this can't will move. Especially this poplar. This poplar only came down about, what, maybe a month ago? Maybe. Used to clamp to turn when we get down to a cant like this. Used to clamp to turn it. There's a turning claw. The turning claw. Tears into the face of the cant really bad. Take a trim cut off of here.
want to write it off as a one-inch board, you can, but it's thinner than the rest. If not, it's scrap. Now that we have our can at 12 inches, Okay, we have our 12-inch can, all cut, ready to go. What we're going to check now that we have it turned up onto the good face. We're going to bring the blade in here just, just touching the edge of the can. We're going to go ahead and run down the length of the can and check for any significant changes between the blade and the can. That'll let us know if we've had any, uh, any deflection in the can while we were cutting. You get movement in these cans and you end up with a, a wonky board on your next cut. So this is a nice way to check it. Don't see any significant changes. We're ready to go. Start cutting some four quarter boards. going to notice here this is what messes a lot of guys up they just go ahead and flip this can over and start cutting again and you'll notice stress in the log you got about a eighth inch maybe quarter inch gap underneath that can that's not good okay that's stress in the log that's not the mill okay the mill is not sagging in the middle a lot of guys get messed up with that and say oh i gotta fix it you know it's not cutting straight i gotta adjust don't all right, that's stressing the wood. Now, if you watch this, let me see if we can catch this. When I go to open the clamp up, when I go to open that clamp, you're gonna see this can jump, okay? Let me get the camera set up here. You're gonna see this can jump. Our gap got even bigger. We're, uh, wow, where are we at here? Now we're near 7 16th, 3 8 7 16th gap in there. It's a lot of stress in this freshy, freshy down poplar. Poplar usually does better if you let it sit for a while, then cut it. But this needs to be cut now, so we deal with a little more stress. All right, 
Way to fix that. We opened the clamp. Let me turn around here. We went ahead, we opened the clamp. It sprung up on us. Close the clamp. Do not draw the clamp down to pull the pull the cant down to the deck. You want it to sit exactly the way it is now. We're gonna go ahead, take a trim cut off of that, flip it over, take another trim cut off of it, and we're ready to start cutting four quarter boards again. Let's get going. Okay, what we're doing here is the cicada climbs up on top of the can. This is in for a surprise. That's one of their Broad, broad 10 cicadas. Anyway, back to business. What we're doing is starting to blade just below the top because as we get into the center, it's going to, uh, the cut's going to become much thicker because it's bowed up in the middle. So we don't want to wait out of the can. And get a nice flat surface. You want to get all the sawdust off because you don't want anything interfering with it sitting flat on the bumps. So that should be nice and flat. There you go. Just to show you what I'm talking about, we're touching the blade on the top of the can here. I'm going to go down and run down to the center. You can already see the gaps opening up a lot there. So you've got yeah, <laughs> that's about halfway. We got a good 3 8 inch, 7 16 gap in there. So let's go ahead and flatten that out. All right. One thing we can do if it works out, which it will, take this right to four quarter setting on our scale. There we go. Yeah. Right to our four quarter setting on this scale. I have it all set up for four quarter board. Right there's your mark. Just above this line. So when I get down to the bottom of this cant, I'll have a four quarter board left on the deck. Let's go ahead and get started.
Hey, while Deb and I go ahead and finish up edging these boards out, we hope that we were able to pass on some of our experiences here and to help others deal with stress in logs. Uh, it can be frustrating at times, That's but uh, I think if you uh, follow some of these basic rules, uh, I think it'll help you out a lot. Hey, if you're new here to the channel, welcome. If you like what you see, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, hit the thumbs up, and hey, go ahead and share it with a friend. Uh, and if you've been here for a while supporting us all along, thank you for your continued support. It really makes a difference with Deb and I. Also, don't forget Iron and Oak Sawmill t-shirts. If you're interested, there'll be a link down in the description. Go ahead and click on that. It takes you over to 76B t-shirts Etsy page. You can order one up there, and they'll have it delivered to you in a hurry. Uh, if you have any questions about what we what we were doing here at the mill, either today or any in, in any of our other videos, go ahead and put it down in the comments section. Be glad to help you out. And as always, thank you for stopping out, and we'll see you at our next time.